Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be taking you through linear sequences. Now, there are lots of examples worked in this video at a nice slow pace, and you can use the timestamps in the pinned comment down below to jump between things so you can start the video where you feel most comfortable. Now, after you've done this video, you can go and check out Pearson's excellent range of math books. They have loads and loads of them. This one, the 10 minute test one, has a really nice little page on sequences that fits in perfectly after this video. If you want a link to it, that is down in the description. We're gonna have a look at linear sequences. Now you might be asked a variety of questions about linear sequences, and the key is to look at the gaps in between the numbers. So for example, in question one, I'm going to ignore the negatives for now. We have 7, 21, 35, 49, and 63. So you've got to think, what do I add to 7 to get up to 21? Now, a good way to do this might be a column subtraction. So we want to get to 21. Uh, we're starting at seven, so a takeaway will be the way to figure out the gap in between. Now, we're going to have to borrow one to start, so 11 take away seven would be four, and then we've got the one that was left over, so we've got 14. So between seven and 21, there is a gap of 14. Now, let's check the next one. Now, you might just assume that the entire sequence is 14, and it is, but you do want to check because sometimes you might get a sequence that doesn't increase by a by the same amount each time. And they are called, for example, quadratic sequences or geometric sequences. Which you want to check is actually a linear sequence. So I want to get to 35. I'm starting at 21. So let's do a takeaway. So 5 takeaway 1 is 4, and 3 takeaway 2 is 1. So that's 14 as well. So I'm fairly confident now that this is going to be a linear sequence, and it's going to be going up by 14 every single time. Now we're being asked by how much is the sequence changing and remember at the start I said oh we forget about the negative numbers for now. Well it's not 7 and 21 it's negative 7 and negative 21 so we're not going up by 14 we're going down by 14 so each one is going to be take away 14. So by how much the sequence changing it we are taking away 14. So let's look at question two now. We have 11, 18, 25, 32, and 39. Now, between 11 and 18, 11 plus 7 would be 18. And then let's try 18 plus 7 to see it's a linear sequence. 18 plus 7 would be 25. So again, we're going to be fairly certain now it's a linear sequence. Let's just check the next one. 25 plus 7 is 32. So we know that that's plus 7 as well. So this is definitely going to be a linear sequence going up by 7 each time. Everything's a positive number. So we're adding 7 each time. Now, as well as being asked by how much seems is changing, you might be asked to find specific missing terms in a sequence. However, it's exactly the same method. So we'll look at our sequence, 7, 13, 19, 25. We're going to think about what's going up by each time. So 7 plus 6 would be 13. And we'll check it's plus 6 for all of them. So 13 plus 6 is 19. And 19 plus 6 is 25. So again, after we check 2 or 3, we're confident it's a linear sequence and it's going up by the same amount each time. That means to get from 25 to the next number, we are also going to be adding on 6. And 25 plus 6 is 31. So the missing term is 31. Moving on to question two, we've got negative numbers again, but we'll ignore the negative numbers to start with. So we have 13, 19, 25, and 31. So from 13 to 19, again, that's going to be another plus six question. And then from 19 to 25, it's going to be another plus six. And then from 25 to 31, that'll be another plus six. We're just going to remember, it's not actually plus six. We have negative numbers in a negative number sequence. It'd be takeaway six instead. So the next step, we're going to be taking away another 6. So again, if we ignore the negative numbers, 31 plus 6 would be 37. The negative numbers would actually be a negative 37. Negative 31 take away 6 is negative 37. But you know, it's the negative numbers don't actually change the digits you're using. It's always going to be a 3 and a 7. The negative numbers just change the sign at the front. Moving on to question five. Now, with this one, we've got 
quite a lot of gaps here and we don't have two numbers next to each other so it's very difficult to figure out where it's going up by each time. So I'm going to set a diagram like normal so we're going to go from 5 to this question mark then from that question mark to that question mark and that question mark to 7 and you'll see that that is three jumps. Now all three jumps all together we're going from 5 to 11 so that would be plus 6. So 3 jumps is plus 6. So if I divide that by 3 and share that plus 6 between the three increases we have it'll be plus 2, plus 2 and plus 2. So now we know it's going up by 2 each time we can write out the whole sequence. So we'd have 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 2 is 9 plus 2 is 11 and plus 2 is 13. And then we had some of those already in the question, so I'm just going to make clear which ones are the answers. So 7 was a missing number, 9 was a missing number, and 13 was a missing number. The biggest mistake that students will make with questions like this is they'll assume which question it is and get them mixed up. So for example, when they're finding a missing term, they might just write this is a plus 6 sequence rather than write in that the missing term is 31. Or when the rasp by changing, they might actually continue the sequence. And so getting the different bits and pieces mixed up. So it's very important to carefully read exactly which thing the question is asking for. Moving on to the medium questions, we're now describing sequences using algebra. So the first sequence is the 2n plus 6 sequence. So let's look at what 2n plus 6 actually means as a sequence. Now what we're going to do is swap the n with different numbers. And for the first five terms, we're going to swap n with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's look at how this works. Now we're going to do a substitution. So in 2n plus 6, if n is 1, that would be 2 1s plus 6. So 2 times 1 is 2, and plus 6 is 8. When n is 2, that would be 2 times 2, plus 6. So 2 times 2 is 4 and plus 6 is 10. So essentially what we're doing, we're remembering the algebra rules. We've got a number and a letter next to each other. It's a multiplication. We don't write multiplications in algebra. So we're multiplying the 2 by all the numbers from 1 to 5. So we do 2 times 3 plus 6, 2 times 4 plus 6 and 2 times 5 plus 6. And all the answers are going to give us all the different terms of the sequence. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 6 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 6 is 14. And if you look at the sequence, 8, 10, 12, 14, it's going up by 2 each time, so the last one must be 16. And rather than writing out that sequence, it's faster just to write 2n plus 6. So now I can go over to the question and just write in these numbers. And these are the first five terms. Now you could draw a diagram like that for every single question problem. On an exam you might be asked one or two questions like this so spending the time on the diagram would actually be quite a good idea but I don't have the space for it and I'm going to try and show you a shortcut. So looking at 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 I'm going to point out first that in the sequence name 2n plus 6 we've got a 2 and we've got a plus 6. And 2 plus 6 is 8. So if you add together the numbers in the name of the sequence, you will get the first term of the sequence. The next thing I want to point out is this sequence is going up by 2 each time. And you actually have a 2 in the sequence name. It's 2n plus 6. So the number on the end term is the same as what we're going up by every single time. So let's try this with question two. So firstly, we've got numbers in the sequence. We've got a four and we've got a takeaway seven. So four takeaway seven is negative three. And that will be the first term of the sequence. The next thing we've got to look at is that there is a four on the n. So this is going to be a plus four sequence. So negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. And 9 plus 4 is 13. We can use the kind of 
how the name is set out, where the numbers are positioned to work out the entire sequence without making a large diagram. So let's do the same thing with question three. We've got a minus six and a plus two. So negative six plus two is four. So this sequence is going to start off at four. Then looking at the number on the n, it's a minus six. So we're going to be going down by six each time. So four take away six is negative two. Negative two take away six is eight. Negative eight take away six is negative 14. And negative 14 take away six is negative 20. Now, you might not just be asked to find the first five terms. You might be asked to find specific terms. For example, in question four, you want to find the 20th term. Now, we don't need to make a huge list of 20 numbers here. We can go straight to the 20th term using the same method. We use question one with a little table. And all we're going to do is swap n with 20. So that would read 2 times 20 take away 8. We use bit mass rules to do the multiplication first. 2 times 20 is 40, and then 48 is 32. Let's do the same thing with question 5. We're on the 35th term. That means we're plopping n with 35. n is always talking about what position of the sequence you're up to. So we have negative 2 times 35, and then we are adding 6. So 2 times 35 is 70, but it's a negative 2 times 35, so it'll be a negative 70 plus 6, and negative 70 plus 6 is going to give us negative 64. Now, again, it's getting these mixed up. So for the first five terms, they might actually find the fifth term only. For the 20th term, they might mistakenly just write the first five terms. They might write the entire list. Or they might even do something from the easy questions and just find out what the next term is or say, oh, it's going down by eight each time. So it's very important to read exactly what the questions are asking you because there are multiple ways to ask these sort of questions. Moving on to the hard questions, what we've been asked to do now is to take a sequence written with numbers and to change it into a sequence written in algebra. An nth term is just a way of asking you to write the sequence using algebra. Now, like most of these questions, the first thing to do is figure out by how much the sequence is going up by each time. So in the first question, we have 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. It's going up by 3 each time. Now, there's a sequence that everyone knows that goes up by three each time. The three times table goes up by three each time. And what we're going to do here is compare the three times table to the sequence that we have. Because you can write the three times table by saying 3n. And the reason why that works, we'll just test this out to make sure it's true. If we have 3n, and we're going to swap n with 1, 2, 3, four and five let's have a look at what happens we'd have three times one three times two just swapping in with the number three times three three times four and three times five that looks a lot like three times table and if we calculate these three times one is three three times two is six three times three is nine and so on so when we say three n that is the algebraic way of saying this is the three times table now, obviously, looking at question one, we don't have the three times table. It's not start with three, it starts with seven. The second term's not a six, it's a ten. But what you might notice is, if you look at the green sequence, which is the three times table, and you look at the sequence in black, which is the one that we've got, you should see that going from 3n to our sequence, you have to add on four to each one. So three plus four is seven. Six plus four is ten. Nine plus four is thirteen. 12 plus 4 is 16. 15 plus 4 is 19. So we're adding 4 to each part of the sequence. So we put plus 4 onto the end of our algebra. The sequence 7, 10, 13, 16, 19 can be described by 3n plus 4. It's a 3 times table, but it's 4 bigger than the 3 times table at each point. So let's try this method with question 2. We have 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Now, this sequence is going up by 5 each time. So we'll start off by writing down the 5 times table to compare. And the 5 times table will be described by saying 5n. Now, obviously, we don't have the 5 times table. So what do we do 
the five times table to get to our sequence. So we'll look at the first number. We're going from five to zero. That would be taking away five. Let's check that works for the rest of the sequence because if it's not a linear sequence, this won't work. So 10 take away five is five. 15 take away five is 10. 20 take away five is 15. And 25 take away five is 20. So this is actually working. So the nth term is 5n take away 5. Now let's take a look at question 3. So we have 8, 18, 28. This is going up by 10 each time. So we're going to start off with a 10 times table to compare. And if we're comparing with the 10 times table, then our nth term would start off with 10n. So going from the 10 times table to our sequence, it looks like we're taking away 2 each time. From 10 to 8, we're taking away 2. From 20 to 18, we're taking away 2. So we're going to add take away 2 to the end. The nth term is 10n take away 2. Now, question 4, we're going to see some negative numbers, but it's going to be exactly the same method. So nth term, we've got 1 minus 2 minus 5, minus 8, and minus 11. This is going down by 3 each time. So if it's going down by 3, we're going to write the negative 3 times table to compare. It's very important to put the negative numbers on, or you will get the wrong answers. Now, it's a negative 3 times table. We're going to write negative 3n. And now, the same method as before. We're going to start off with negative 3n. We're going to move to our sequence and look at what we have to add or take away. So from negative 3 to 1, we must have to add 4, but I'll check with the rest. So negative 6 plus 4 will be negative 2. Negative 9 plus 4 will be negative 5. So it looks like we are adding 4 each time. So the nth term will be negative 3n plus 4. Let's try that again as well. So we have 2, negative 2, negative 6, negative 10, negative 14. It looks like it's going down by 4 each time. So we're going to write down the negative 4 times the table, just the 4 times table, but negative numbers. So that would be negative 4n. And we have a look at what we need to add or subtract to get to our sequence. So from negative 4 to 2, we must be adding 6. And we can test out the other item in the sequence. So negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. This all seems to work. So we've got our final answer. Now, all of these answers are mathematically correct, and they will give you full marks in any exam. But I just want to show you something that in answers and math schemes that might confuse you. So you might see negative 3n plus 4 written like this. And what's happened is the 4 and the negative 3n have been swapped around. Now, the reason why this is done is because positive numbers don't actually need the positive sign on. If it's at the end, like the positive 4 is in the original way it was written, you need the positive in there to show that it's positive. But if you've got a positive number at the start of an expression, you don't need to write the plus at the start. We just assume it's positive. And what this does is, it means we're using one less character to write down the sequence. So rather than using five characters, a takeaway, a 3, an n, a plus, and a 4, now we're using four characters because we didn't need to write down the plus sign. We've got the 4, the minus, the 3, and the n. And you'll see the same thing with the final question with the whole number and the nth term round. It means exactly the same thing. It will get you the same answers. It will get you the same number of marks in an exam. But it's useful just to know what that means, just in case you've given that as an answer and then you've written it the other way around and you feel like you might have made a mistake. You haven't. Get full marks for both versions.